Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 10th of July 1584, Catholic conspirator Francis Throckmorton was executed at Tyburn for high treason after the Throckmorton plot had been discovered. Let me tell you a bit more about Throckmorton and his plot. Francis Throckmorton, or Throgmorton, was born in 1554 and was the son of Sir John Throckmorton of Feckenham in Worcestershire, a staunch Catholic, and his wife Margaret Putnam. Sir John had served Queen Mary I as Vice President of the Council in the Marches of Wales and had been knighted by Queen Elizabeth I and made Chief Justice of Chester. Francis was educated at Hart Hall, Oxford, and then at the Inner Temple, one of London's Inns of the Court. In the 1570s, he married Anne or Agnes Sutton, daughter of Edward Sutton, 4th Baron Dudley, and the couple had a son called John. In 1578, the Throckmorton family got into trouble when Francis's mother, Lady Throckmorton, was reported for celebrating the Mass in the household of her brother-in-law, and Francis was accused of being present at exercises of religion contrary to present practices. As a result, he was placed in the custody of the Dean of St Paul's, but this was only for a month as his Protestant cousins interceded on his behalf. Then, a year later, Francis's father was removed from his office of Chief Justice of Chester for allegedly showing undue partiality in a case he died a year later. Perhaps his family's treatment combined with his faith led to Francis's subsequent actions. He'd gone into exile in the Low Countries following his release, and it's there that he began talking with other discontented Catholics about the altering of the state in England and how a foreign invasion would help this. As soon as he was back in England in the early 1580s, he began plotting with other like-minded young Catholic men who supported the claim of Mary, Queen of Scots, to the throne of England. His plotting soon came to the notice of Sir Francis Walsingham, Elizabeth I's famous spymaster, whose agent reported that Francis had dined with the French ambassador who'd sent money to Mary. So Walsingham ensured that Francis was watched. In November 1583, Francis was in the middle of writing a letter to the Scottish Queen when he was arrested. He managed to destroy the letter by burning it and to send other treasonous correspondence to the Spanish ambassador, Bernardino Mendoza, via his maid. But his remaining papers were evidence of him plotting a foreign invasion with other Catholics. He was tortured by racking, but would not confess or give any incriminating evidence against his friends, claiming that the government had forged the papers that were evidence against him. His biographer, Alison Plowden, writes that he was able to smuggle a message out to Mendoza, written in cipher on the back of a playing card, assuring the ambassador that he would not betray his friends. However, he confessed all after a second racking. Francis told of how the Duke of Guise, supported by the King of Spain, was preparing to invade England, release Mary, depose Elizabeth and replace her with Mary. Francis's role, along with his brother Thomas and the Spanish ambassador, was to organise a group of Catholic men to welcome the invasion at Guise's landing at Arundel in Sussex. Thomas was able to flee into exile before Walsingham could arrest him but the Spanish ambassador, who was protected by diplomatic immunity, was expelled from England in January 1554, and Francis was tried for high treason. At his trial on the 21st of May 1584, he tried to retract his confession, blaming the torture he'd suffered, stating that he would have said anything to stop his pain, but he was convicted of treason and sentenced to death. He was executed at Tyburn on this day in history, the 10th of July, 1584, going to his death very stubbornly and refusing to ask the Queen's forgiveness for his actions. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 10th of July, 1553, Lady Jane Grey was officially proclaimed Queen Jane at the Tower of London 
in Cheapside and in Fleet Street. However, one young man could not keep quiet about his views regarding Mary being the rightful queen, and he suffered a rather nasty punishment as a result. You can find out more about that in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to in the description. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.